OK, you're in Microsoft Excel and you want to split your data into separate columns. I'm going to show you four ways of doing this. First of all, with text to columns, then with flash fill, then with the new text split function in Excel 365. And I'll also show you how to do it with Power Query. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how to create an Office script, which will automate this task for you when you next need to perform it. OK, let's start with text to columns. So I want to split these names into two columns, first name and last name. To use text to columns, you select the data that you want to split. You go to the Data tab on your ribbon. And in the Data Tools group, you click on Text to Columns. Make sure Delimited is selected here. It will be by default. Then go to Next. And then you need to specify the delimiter in your data that's currently separating the two columns. The delimiter in our example is just the space. So I can untick these other options. Click on Next. And next, I have to choose the destination. So where do I want to place the split text? So you can either leave the destination as it is. So this would end up then as your first name column and be your last name column. Or if you wanted to keep the full names as they are and then have two separate columns, first name and last name, then we need to select B2 as our destination. So we click on Finish. You might get this message. There's already data here. Do you want to replace it? Click on OK. And you can see it successfully split the names into two columns. Let's try this one. I want three columns here. I've got a product ID, costs and revenue. So I'm going to select the text, data tab on my ribbon, text to columns. Again, it's delimited this time by a semicolon. So what I have to do is I have to tick this option semicolon. And if I look down here, you can see it's successfully splitting the text. Click Next. Now in this example, I want to keep the product ID in column E, costs in F and revenue in G. So my destination is E2. Click on Finish. Click on OK here and it splits the data out for you. OK. Now in this one, we have multiple delimiters, a space, a comma and a space, and then a space hyphen space. How will text to columns cope with this? Well, I will need to say that I have a comma as a delimiter, a space as a delimiter, and also a hyphen as a delimiter. So I'll type a hyphen in this box. So it split the text successfully, but we do have a problem with New York. We'll deal with that later. Next, my destination is going to be K2. Finish. It split it successfully, but we do have this problem with New York. So how do we deal with this? Well, what I'm actually going to do, if I just delete this text and then insert a column here, I'm going to substitute the last space with a non-breaking space. And to do that, I'm going to use the substitute function. So in this text, the old text that I want to replace is a space and the new text is character 160. Now character 160 returns a non-breaking space, so not a standard space. And the instance number is going to be five. So I've got my first space there, then my second, third, fourth, and then fifth. None of the other text strings have a fifth space. So it's only going to replace a space with a non-breaking space in this record here. So I close the bracket and press enter and then copy this down. Then what I will need to do is copy and paste values. So control C to copy, then home, paste, values. Then what I can do is select this text, data, text to columns, next. I want a comma space and other. You can see it's successfully split it. So next, my destination is going to be L2, click on finish, and I'm done. Let's move on to flash fill. Now flash fill will work with simpler examples. So if I wanted a first name in column B, all I would do is type the first name, control enter to stay in the cell, and then control E. And that's the shortcut for flash fill. So it's 
identified the pattern of the data here, which is all characters up to a space, and then repeated it down this column. Last name would be the same, Smith. Control Enter will leave you in the cell, and Control E will flash fill. And I can do the same here. TP1234 is the product code. Control Enter, Control E. Costs five six seven eight nine control enter control e and revenue seven eight nine three eight control enter control e okay let's move on to text split text split is available in excel 365 equals text split so the text i want to split is here and then i want to split it into columns so i specify a column delimiter so the first name and last name are separated by a space. And then I can just copy this down. Do the same here, equals text split. Here's my text. And the column delimiter is a semicolon. And then I can copy this down. Now the advantage of this method is if I change a name, so Robert becomes Roberta, then this automatically updates, whereas the text to columns and flash fill methods would not have updated. Now, let's try this more involved example where we have different delimiters equals text split. So here's my text and my column delimiter. Well, there are multiple column delimiters. So what you do, you open up a brace bracket or a curly bracket and you specify the delimiters. So the first one is a space, comma, then I have a comma space, then I have a space dash space, and then I close the brace brackets. And if I close the bracket for text split and press enter and then copy this down, you can see it does split the text, except we have this problem again with New York being split over two columns. So I can use the substitute function within the text split function to solve this problem. So substitute text in J2. And the old text is going to be a space. And the new text is going to be character 160, which is the non-breaking space. And I want to replace the fifth instance. So if I close the bracket there and press enter, and then copy this down, it resolves that issue. Okay, let's see if we can do this in Power Query. Now, when you use Power Query, you do need to house your data in an Excel table, and you can either put your data in a table before you use Power Query, or you can get Power Query to put your data in a table. So with this example, we'll put it in a table first. So click somewhere in your data, go to insert and then table. And then you just need to click OK in this dialog box. Now we're ready to use Power Query. Click somewhere in the data, go to the data tab on your ribbon, and then click on this button from table range. Home tab on this ribbon, the Power Query editor. Click on split column by delimiter. Our delimiter is going to be a space, so that needs to be selected in this drop down. Click on OK. You can then give your columns a useful name, first name, and then last name, and then close the load. Now it will load to a separate sheet, but what I like about this method is if I go back to the original sheet and I add a new name and then refresh this query, it will include my name in that list. Okay, let's try it for this more challenging example where we have a space, a comma, and a dash as a delimiter. So on the data tab of the ribbon, we go to from table range. Click on split column by delimiter. 
And in this dialog box, you can only specify one delimiter. To start with, we'll say that's a space. Click on OK. Then you go over to your applied steps. You can get rid of this last step here, change type one, but we need to edit this step up in this formula bar. Now where it says split text by delimiter, you need to change that to split text by any delimiter. And the delimiter that's currently specified is a space. And because we want to specify multiple delimiters, we put a brace bracket before that space character and then comma, we specify our second delimiter, which is a comma, and then our third delimiter, which is a dash. Then we close the brace brackets. Now I'll just expand this, and actually that has applied that edit, but I was going to expand it to show you the rest of the formula here. Name one, name two, name three. Now that gives us three columns, but unfortunately that's now not showing the location. So we'll add some more columns. And for argument's sake, I'll just follow the same naming convention, name.4. So if I confirm that, I can now see the location, but for New York, I'm missing York. So I'll add another column. And I'll press enter. And there I can see York. So what I can then do is merge these two columns. So I select the columns. I go to transform and merge columns. Separator is going to be a space. And the new column is going to be called location. Click on OK. I can then change the other column names. I can specify date format for this column. And then I can close and load to the workbook. And I have the data split out into separate columns. So the final thing I'll show you is how to create an office script for this task. Now you will need to have a commercial license to use office scripts. If you have got a commercial license, you'll see the automate tab on your ribbon. And what this allows us to do is record steps that we can then repeat whenever we need to repeat this particular task. Now I'll close down the queries and connections task pane, and I'm going to click on this button here, record actions. And now it's going to record all our steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the values in column A, the names that I want to split. I'm going to go to the data tab. I'm going to go to text to columns. I'm going to go to next. Our delimiter is a space, so I'll just get rid of these other ticks for comma and other. I go to next. And then I need to specify my output cell, which is going to be B2. Click on finish. Click on OK here. And it splits the text. So then I'm going to stop recording. And I'm going to give this script a name. I'm going to call it split names. So if I went to this sheet here, I've got a different set of names, but I want to perform the same task. Now I could run the script here, but if I haven't just created it, the way I would access it is to go to the automate tab and use this button here. So if I close this down, click this button here, and then I'd click on run, and it automates the task for me. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.